So, uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, today, uh, first we will complete the study of scales and then try to finish off the study of uh, fins also. Uh, so in the last class we have discussed about the scales, the different type of scales the, fi the fishes possess. Either it may be placoid or it can be genoid or it may be tenoid or cycloid or different uh, genoid scales. And you know in case of the fishes, the uh, placoid scales which are found in the uh, cartilage in fishes, they are uh, um, they originate from epidermis as well as a dermis. So, uh, but whereas the scales of the bony fishes that originates from the dermis. So, these are all the things which we have discussed and now we have also discussed about different type of scales. Now, today we will try to discuss about the uses of the scales and then we can move on to the study of fields. So, all of you know that the main purpose of having the scale is nothing but the protection. So, the scale is one way it is an exoskeleton on the body. So, and of course, for us, the scales are important because it helps in the classification. Because each group of uh, or each species of fishes have definite number of scales as well as definite pattern of scales and definite types of scales. So, that's why. Uh, for example, if we can see the placoid scales, we immediately say that it is the conductrice. So, suppose if it is a genoid scale, we can say that uh, it is a primitive bony fishes. Whereas cycloid and tenoid scales are found in the higher or the most modern or recent uh, telo or what you call the bony fishes. Uh, even uh, you can classify, uh, sometimes the scales are useful in separating the fishes into different orders and families also. Uh, whereas the siluroid fishes were scaleless and uh, they were uh, they can be distinguished from the cyprinoid fishes because there is no scales. Uh, even the scales give us a lot of information about the fossil fishes and even uh, classifying the uh, extinct one. Scales are useful in studying the food habits of even piscivorous animal because piscivorous means the animal which feeds on the fishes. So sometimes what happens if you uh, cut the fish, uh, if, the, if you cut other fish, uh, other animals and in the gut of that animal if you find scales you can say that this particular animal feeds on the fishes. So that's why uh, by counting the number of fish scales along with the lateral line and round of the body, you can classify uh, the and identify the fishes. Uh, for example, uh, even uh, cycloid and tenoid scales, uh, because by virtue of having the growth ring on them or growth lines on them, help us in calculating the age as well as the growth rate of the fishes. Uh, there are many fishes species which undergo seasonal growth and that is also marked in the lines of growth on the scale. So, uh, whereas in some species like salmon, um, the spawning marks can be seen on the scales, even the spawning marks, uh, so that uh, it is possible to find out how many times the fish lays the egg, spawning, how many times the fish spawns especially in salmon and other things, the spawning marks are also seen. So all these things help us in the scientific understanding of the fishes. Um, scales grow throughout life inside with the fishes except the placoid scales which do not grow. Uh, so this growth uh, leaves some concentric lines on the scales uh, which helps us in determination of the age like salmon, trout, bass and several other species. Uh, and for every species 
the scale pattern is constant and each species has its own uh, uh, this particular the scale pattern so that's why uh, by seeing the arrangement counting the number and form and structure of the scale uh, it gives us an import an important key for identification as well as the classification of the fishes also apart from all those scales that we have discussed there is also one more type of scale which i have kept it last that the scoot scales this is very less common type of scale uh, the scoot here uh, there is a, the these scales are in the form of external shield like bony plates uh, it's a it's a shield like a bony plate or it is modified otherwise very thick scale uh, that sometimes keeled or spiny in nature also see uh, the uh, in the pine cone fish completely or partly covered with the scoots on the body can you make out here in this photograph you can clearly make out these scales are very thick and they are like bony plates um, so these are the things um, I wanted to discuss with you as far as the scales are concerned because scales are very very important in the fishes and fish uh, so that's the reason uh, they have kept it for your uh, study so uh, do you understand what i am what i am discuss heli yes tell me artaita yes sir gotaita yes sir any doubt so a write up about this will be uh, sent to you by evening uh, the scales and uh, uh, fins in case of the fishes uh, i will send it to you by evening uh, but now uh, if uh, there are no doubts let me move on to the fins and its modification in fishes after the scales let us also look into the uh, fins probably all of you know the fishes like the scales the fins are also very interesting you cannot imagine a fish without scale without fins though there are some fishes where the fins are there but they are fused or very small however small they may be but the fishes do possess the uh, fins fins are the unique for this uh, fishes so as far as the fishes skin the fins are concerned there are different type of fins and if you see uh, the morphology of the fish where the study of fin itself is a important characteristic feature both in identification of the fishes as well as the classification of the fishes so the fishes have different type of fins uh, that's on the back the fins are known as dorsals and the near the operculum or gill you call it as pelvic uh, sorry the pectoral and just be, uh, behind that you will have the pelvic fins then in the anal region they have anal fins and in the tail they have caudal fins so this is uh, the uh, scale different types of fins which are present on the fishes in some fishes in addition to these there may be one more special type of fish uh, a special type of fin which is known as adipose fin which is a small fin which is formed by the deposition of the fat so these are the different types of fins and of course the fins are the appendages attachments a thin component appendage attached to a larger body surface the fins are always having a large margin with the help of which it can attach to the main body and the fins are the most distinctive feature of a fish like the scales the fins are also very distinctive uh, from one species of fishes to another fish, uh, species of fish uh, the fins may be composed of bony spines uh, probably which you can see in the uh, many of the fishes and which it is hard to handle them also many times when the handling you might have got it got your finger punctured also sometime it happens especially if you uh, uh, can 
catch the live fish, then the problem will be there. So these are bony spines protruding from the bone uh, body with skin uh, covering them and joining together uh, in the form of a webbed fashion as seen in most of the bony fishes. See these are the some of the spines uh, where they are joined together either in a, uh, mostly in the webbed fa fashion or uh, sometimes uh, it may be similar to a flipper as seen in the sharks. So the fins may be supported by not only the spines, even soft one, the, what are called as rays also. In the same fin, first there can be one or two spines and then followed by that uh, rays may follow it. So that the fin. Um, these fins are undoubtedly the appendages. Appendages means attachments which are used for the to maintain the position which are used for the fish to maintain the position and even to carry out the locomotion and steering that the changing the direction and even if the fish want to want to stop then also the same fins will be useful so that's why the fins are of different or have the different functions to carry out starting from maintaining equilibrium uh, that is and movement steering and even the stopping the fish from moving. Uh, that's why the fishes provide, the fins provide the fish first in the mobility, stability and maneuverability. Maneuvering means swimming. So mobility, stability and maneuverability, all the three things are assigned to the fins in case of the fishes. Even to a certain extent, the fins also help them help in protection from the predators. Uh, many times the fins are modified, colored in such a way that uh, the uh, that protects the fish from predators. So the fins can be grouped into two categories or two groups. Uh, two groups, one is paired and another one is the unpaired. Paired fins are pectoral and pelvic fins. Unpaired fins are dorsal fins, caudal fin, and the anal fin. So these three fins are unpaired, whereas pectoral and pelvic fins are always paired fins. So that's why they are called as paired fins. So here the pectoral and pelvic fins, and there are unpaired fins also, three dorsal fin and the tail fin as well as the anal fin. Now, what are the functions of these paired fins? Paired fins, as I have told you, they are nothing but the pectoral fins and uh, pelvic fins. They are mainly used for propulsion in combination with swimming or there are certain fishes which crawl on the bottom. They are also the same these pectoral and pelvic fins are useful. In some, these pectoral and pelvic fins may be modified for that purpose. So that's, and that is the first thing, means of propulsion and even for crawling. The pectoral and pelvic fins are commonly used for quickly stopping the fish. Suppose if the fish is moving with very high speed, all of a sudden if it has to stop, then these paired fins will come to its aid. Then uh, the next one is controlling pitching, change of position uh, from the horizontal and to vertical. If, if it is swimming like this, all of a sudden it has to go upwards then also uh, controlling pitching that is also uh, done or aided by the help of this paired pectoral and pelvic fins. Then the same fins are uh, used for uh, attract the mates and uh, attract the mates opposite sex and startle the other fish also. Uh, uh, they may show some aggressive posture by spreading them or by showing different coloration to startle the other fishes. Uh, there are uh, two examples where you can see the pectoral fins are primarily used for propulsion. For example, in uh, labrys, rowing type of movement, um, the fins are used like a oar of the boat, boat only, you know, the movement of the vessel. Then in Raji forms, uh, the swim 
bird like swimming uh, because it beats as the rajiform is a uh, contractive fish it has a large enlarged pectoral fins and uh, like the birds beat the wings the fish also beat the uh, pe enlarged pectoral fin and swims in scale sand rays you can see that so specially the pectoral fins pectoral fin the pair fins pectoral and pelvic in that the pectoral fins they are on the side of the body just behind the gill cavity so that's why pectoral region where the gills are there just behind the gills they are known as pectoral fins uh, in case of the primitive fishes these pectoral fins are found lower on the body almost uh, where close to the ventral side just behind the uh, gill cavity uh, in primitive fishes these pectoral fins are found uh, below lower the or uh, body cav body that means near the ventral side in some the pectoral fins uh, look like arm like extension in some other cases the pectoral fins are highly enlarged probably the go good example is the exocetus or flying fish where the um, the wings are uh, very extensive which helps in the flight in some the pectoral fins serve as a, a pad resting on the bottom in some cat fishes it works as a pad there are some ton fishes these pectoral fins are uh, used for various other purposes also uh, even uh, uh, it can be used for gliding swimming holding the position and changing the direction very quickly also it is see this is the uh, how the pectoral fins are enlarged in the in some of the flying fishes the you just uh, notice the location just behind the gills you can see them then comes the pelvic fins uh, pelvic fins are located ventrally below and just behind the pectoral fins on the ventral side this pelvic fins are always on the ventral side uh, almost uh, below the uh, pectorals uh, this pelvic fins mainly for stabilizing that is the maintaining the buoyancy as well as stabilizing and even for applying brakes while moving and move vertically as well as horizontal so if they want to move up and down the fishes move up and down then also the pelvic fins are of useful along with stabilizing and braking uh, mostly these uh, pelvic fins are have very little use for locomotion as far as the swimming or movement is concerned they have little use but they are more important for stabilizing braking and move up and down that is changing the orientation of the body upwards or horizontal uh, for example in, in there are certain fishes where this pelvic fins are modified uh, like a sucker or in some uh, sucker for example in sucker fish or in another um, fish that is the gobies even gara the most common freshwater fish uh, where the pelvic fins function as a uh, 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 sucker or it can it function on suction cup principle and helps firmly to the uh, stones boulders or logs or even to the any substratum and uh, uh, then it is very difficult to dislodge them even sometimes the high current water currents also fail to dislodge them so the pelvic fins in some of them are highly modified as suckers there are uh, certain examples where uh, the fishes have lost their pelvic fins there is no pelvic fin at all Uh, this is seen uh, among the fishes especially the deep water fishes which lives scoring along the ocean floor they usually uh, they are lying in the ocean floor and in some in such fishes um, the if not all in few of those these pelvic fins are totally absent and uh,
so uh, the uh, pelvic fins are usually abdominal that is on the ventral side meaning they are attached midway down the belly in some also when uh, pelvic fins are below the pectoral fins such can be seen in the diagram which i have shown you uh, usually of the non existent fish they are termed as thoracic attachment is thoracic when uh, when the thoracic pelvic fin is attached under the gills then you call the position as jugular and if it is under the chin or eye in some there are exceptional they are known as mental location so it can be thoracic in most of this one it may be abdominal in some just below that it is called as the behind the pelvic fin you call it as uh, sorry pectoral fin you call it as thoracic and if it is under the gills you call it as jugular and if it is under the eyes or chin in very few fish they have pelvic fins located there and they are called as mental so this is the pelvic fins which you can see the abdominal they are here they are located in the abdominal region almost in the center on the abdominal side they are known as abdominal see again i have uh, shown you another photograph where you can see the position of the fin so this is the pectoral fins and if the pectoral fin, this pelvic fins are somewhere here you call it as jugular if in very rarely the same pelvic fins will be somewhere here then you call it as mental so here it is uh, abdominal almost so these are about this is about the two unpaired fins the pectoral and pelvic fins now we have three unpaired fins this unpaired fins are dorsal fins anal fin and the caudal fin the dorsal fins are located on the dorsal side that is on the back so see here whatever the fins that you can see here on the back you can call it as the dorsal fin so this uh, dorsal fin helps the fish in sharp turns and stops if it has to take a very sharp turn all of a sudden then and even for stopping the movement also the dorsal fins are useful this also assist the fish in rolling even the fish can roll uh, like this or like this this dorsal fin help them assist them in the rolling uh, usually many fish have only one dorsal fin but there are examples where you have two dorsal fins there the first photograph shows you single dorsal fin the second one show you the two dorsal fins and the third photograph shows you the three dorsal fins they are all unpaired fins uh, if there are three dorsal fins it is known as prox proximal this is the proximal fin this is the middle fin and the last one is known as distal dorsal fin or Uh, it's also known as first dorsal second dorsal and the third dorsal like that also it is known but the most uh, at approximate one is the first one is proximal dorsal uh, fin second one is the middle dorsal fin and the last one is the distal dorsal fin this is how it is known. generally the fish have only one dorsal fin there are few for example sharks there are two dorsal fin. several fish have just two dorsal fin with the middle and distal fin fused together so that's why one proximal there will be one uh, proximal and one dorsal fin will be there one uh, the uh, distal fin will be there so this uh, dorsal fins may be fleshy because they may be having rays which are made up of cartilage quite large 
in and in some it may be supported by spines there will be one or two spines and rays may follow it such things are there uh, even uh, dorsal fins are also highly modified in some of the swans dorsal fins have been modified in remoras remora fish into a sucking disc on the back there will be a sucking disc like that that allows uh, the remora fish what it does is it's a very lazy fish uh, it usually cling to the shark on the abdomen of the shark it get attaches because of this sucker and wherever the shark moves this remora fish also moves so remora fish gets a free ride then not only free ride the hunting is done by the shark when the shark hunts whatever the things there are left out or whatever the things they come out the remora fish feeds on them so remora fish by having this uh, uh, sucker uh, has two advantage one is it gets a free ride second one is it feeds on the uh, leftovers of the uh, shark predation so in, in there is also one more fish what you call the angler fish um, the ang in angler fish the dorsal fin is highly modified it looks like a fishing rod and that is to lower the prey uh, to lower the prey the see it do the dorsal fin is so much modified that it looks like a uh, hook fishing rod fishing rod and hook bata ita kanadale en gaada antirla adu rithi kanustu so that helps in uh, uh, attracting the prey prey or lowering the prey so this uh, dorsal fin may be of different types uh, one uh, it can be a single dorsal fin or in some it may be split like this in some it may be uh, pointed as you have seen in case of the angler fish or it can be uh, trigger like this see the shape then it can be spine or uh, triangular spine or triangular or the spine of the dorsal fin this is a sing single it can be single it can be trailing rod dorsal fin trail like a trail like small rounded pipe it also appears so there are different modifications in different fish species of fish there's the dorsal fin then the other uh, unpaired fin is the caudal fin this uh, caudal fin is the caudal means tail the fish the uh, fin that is found in the tail located in the tail that is known as at the end of the caudal peduncle we call it as caudal fin the last hind fin the for the fish identification the caudal fin is used to distinguish one type of fish to other because the caudal fins are highly modified there are different types of caudal fins i uh, indented round square forked lunate pointed emarginate heterocircle so different uh, shapes are possible in case of the caudal fin caudal fin uh, if it is like this homo circle the tail is a modern development it is symmetrical both the lobes upper lobes and lower lobes if both are symmetrical that is such type of tail is known as homo circle tail or homo circle uh, caudal fin see this lobe and this lobe they are identical almost that is homo circle because both the lobes are at symmetry so such uh, fin is known as homo circle this homo circle includes truncate square slightly forked deeply forked different again there is possibility uh, in most of the fishes the coral fin shape uh, helps us in identification of the fishes uh, it can be truncate it can be square it can be slightly forked or it can be deeply forked see this is one type of tail 
what is known as the tail fin that is the heterocircle tail what is heterocircle tail this is seen in most of the ancient forms in shark you can see same type of tail only few primitive fishes like sharks sturgeons and paddle fishes have this whole heterocircle tail so it was necessary because the out of this see the two lobes the upper lobe is greatly enlarged especially uh, among this primitive fishes there is no uh, swim bladders because of the absence of swim bladders uh, they are heavy in the front uh, then in such cases when they are heavy in the front if they use some symmetrical tail uh, usually the fish will sink to the bottom plunge into the bottom so that's why here they have developed a tail which is de develop de deliberately downwards driving design supplemented it with horizontal plane like pectoral fin and this small and uh, the upper one very long and large helps in maintaining the weight balance otherwise uh, the fishes will topple to the bottom then uh, the tail has non differentiated caudal fin um, see here in this caudal fin which is totally undifferentiated um, this is found in the eels probably while studying the eel you have seen that because the caudal fin and the dorsal fin and the anal fin all the fins are fused together here see this is the caudal fin sorry dorsal fin this is the caudal fin and this is the anal fin all the fins are fused together for example in lampreys then apart from these major you have different types of types of tail one is truncated tail uh so here uh, in the truncated uh, tail helps in good maneuverability and uh, short bursts of speed uh, though it affects the speed but they have a greater maneuverability and uh, they have less drag compared to the round shape drag is less so example is killifish uh, this uh, kind of tail is commonly found in the fish in the coastal regions see the truncated this is the truncated tail then the forked tail this a fish having a forked tail has very good maneuverability it can maneuver like this and speed over longer distances it can cover longer distance with high speed also and less drag so all minovas have this type of forked tail see it is like a forked tail tail is forked minovas where you can see this is the see forked tail then the round tail large amount of surface area round tail means see this is the round tail means large amounts of surface area for effective maneuvering and acceleration they can maneuver quickly and accelerate the speed also but this round shape creates drag so as a result they cannot swim longer distances because they get tired easily they get fatigued then the other type of tail is emarginate this emarginate tail is useful for acceleration as well as for maneuvering for both this emarginate tail is useful and drag is also uh, less 
compared to round and truncated teeth. So that's why they get less fatigue. As a result, they get less tired, so they can cover more distances, swim more distances. Lunate or crescent, it is like a half moon. Uh, lunate, shape, tail like those found on the sword fishes, which you can see. This lunate or crescent shape, this is the shape, see, swordfish or black marlin. So here, uh, this is not good for maneuvering. But it allows for greater speed over a long distance. So usually the fishes which travel long distances, they have lunate tails because they get great speed for long distances. Uh, mostly the fishes which are living in the open sea, where they have to cover long distances, they have lunate or crescent shape, <coughs> like swordfish or merlin fish, lunate or crescent shape. So this is the different types of shapes, pointed, pointed quadrant, round quadrant, truncate, emarginate, fork, lunate, and heterocircle. So these are the uh, different types of uh, tails here. So now, uh, just to compare them, the round shape of the caudal, it has large amount of surface area that allows for effective acceleration and maneuvering, but it creates tiredness and it can, uh, the fishes get tired easily. Whereas truncate, it has more acceleration and maneuvering and compared to round tail, it has less drag, so uh, they get uh, tired not very easily. Then emarginate. Emarginate tails, you can see the shape, effective acceleration, maneuvering and less drag. Whereas the forked one, it has good acceleration and maneuvering, less surface area means less drag. So not easily get tired. And the last one is the lunate, half moon shape the rigid fin with less surface, with less drag, great acceleration, but maneuvering is decreased. So these are the different shapes. Now the anal fin. Anal fin is located on the ventral surface, just behind the anus. Anal fins are located on the ventral surface, just behind the anus. Uh, the anal fin is usually short, but there are certain fishes which have a long stretch of anal fin, and they may merge with the caudal fin, as you have seen in case of the eels. Usually shorter. Generally, the anal fins are shorter. But there are examples where they have long stretch and they may merge with the coral fin also. Even there are uh, very few fishes have more than one anal fin. That's in the cords. In cord fishes, they have more than one anal fin. And in fact, some of them do not have the anal fin at all. For example, skates and rays. In the skates and rays, uh, there is no anal fin. See, this, uh, this is the location of the anal fin, which you can see. It is a ray where you can see skates and rays, there is no anal fin at all. Uh, even in some species, anal fins are modified 
into an intermittent organ that is the organ that can be used as used in copulation especially among the fishes which go for internal fertilization and if the anal fin is modified into an organ that is being used for copulation that is known as gonopodium and it has the role in internal fertilization because through this gonopodium they can deposit the egg in the female reproductive system uh, by copulation and which is known as the internal fertilization apart from all these things there's also one more fin type what is known as adipose fin very rarely some of the fishes possess this adipose fin especially the cat fishes have another fleshy lobe just behind the dorsal fin see this is the dorsal fin just behind that there is one lobe like thing fleshy lobe and that is called as adipose fin adipose means fat the fat fins the function of the adipose fin is still it's a mystery but one report that has been published in 2011 suggests that uh the adipose fin is a sense organ they suggest that it's a fin uh, that is very vital for detection and response to stimulus stimuli that is it's a sensory organ uh, which is used as touch even for sound and changes in the pressure can be perceived by this adipose fin but till now we do not have much information as far as this adipose fin is concerned but only very few fishes like cat fishes they have the adipose fin see here you can clearly see the adipose fin it is just behind the dorsal fin in front of the caudal peduncle where you can see the adipose fin so these are uh, and then uh, okay um, there are finless or what is known as scutes finless or scutes these finlets are small fins located between the dorsal fin and the caudal fin see this is the dorsal fin this is the caudal fin in between that can you make out here like a saw teeth of a saw now uh, that is between the dorsal fin and tail fin these are the finlets of small fins and even they are found in between anal fin and caudal fin also see here in between the anal fin and caudal fins also see this is the anal fin and this is the caudal fin in between that also you can see some uh, finlets or small uh, fins which are popularly known as finlets or scutes uh, these uh, finlets are found uh, among those fishes which are swimming very fast and which cover which have to cover long distances like tuna so these finlets um, accelerate the speed or helps or aids in the speed of the fish by cutting through the water it enhances or it enhances the speed of the fish mm. see the scutes is the dorsal fin is the anal fin in between there are finlets and like that is the um, anal fin is the caudal fin here also you have the scutes scutes or finlets see here that is seen among the fishes which want to attain high speed and swim for long distances uh this is what uh, i wanted to discuss with you as far as the scales and fins are concerned even here uh, we have discussed the uh different types of scales uh, not only different type of scales and their use uh and their origin how they originate all those things have been discussed elaborately 
and then we have also discussed about the different type of fins based on their position size shape and the uses of the fins each and every fin also we have discussed then in addition we have also discussed about two more adipose fins and finless and scutes so that completes our discussion on scales and fins in case of the fishes and only the topic that is left in the fishes is the migration of fishes uh, which uh, i would like to take up in the next class only now even if i take out if i start also only 3 minutes are left so i will not be able to even uh, start or introduce the topic to you so now there are 2 3 minutes time if you have any doubt or if you want any enquiries you are free to interact with me why there are uh, only 17 participants today ಉಳಿದವ್ರಿ ಏನಾಗಿದೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿಗೂ ಏನ ಹೌದಾ ಏನು ದೀಪಶ್ರೀ ರಕ್ಷಾ ಏನು ಉಳಿದ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿಗೆ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದಾರ ಅಥವಾ ಇವತ್ತೇನೆ ಇದ ಹೇಳ್ರಿ ಏನು ಒಂದೊಂದು ದಿವ್ಸ ಬರ್ತಾರೆ ಒಂದೊಂದು ದಿವ್ಸ ಬರೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಯಾಕಂತೆ ಏನಂತೆ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಅವ್ರದ್ದು ಏನು ಮಾಡ್ತಾರಂತೆ ಮನೇಲಿ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಕ್ಲಾಸಿಗೂ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿಗೂ ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ಆಗ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಆಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂದರೆ ಸೊ ಮೀನ್ ವೈಲ್ ಯು ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಪ್ರಿಪೇರಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅಟ್ ಎನಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಅನೌನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ಒನ್ಸ್ ದ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ರಿಓಪನ್ಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಟೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಸೆಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಸೊ ಅದನ್ನು ಸುಮ್ಮನೆ ಬುಕ್ಕನ್ನು ಮುಚ್ಚಿಟ್ಬಿಡ್ಬೇಡಿ ಆ ನೋಟ್ ಬುಕ್ಕನ್ನು ಏನು ತಯಾರು ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಅದನ್ನು ಗ್ಲಾಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇರಿ ಒಮ್ಮ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಯು ರೀಡ್ ದ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಮೀಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಸೊ ಓಕೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ಅಟೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ and we will meet in the next class and if you have any doubt even you can ask here or you can message me however all of you know my phone number and whatsapp number also you can whatever the or you can mail me uh, so i'll be happy to uh, uh, answer for your queries and uh, this thing okay next week i will give you the assignment also because i have to give you the assignment <laughs> so that will be given in the next class okay thank you any doubt shall we wind up yen heli sumitra kirti